Hello and welcome to a short video describing the differences uh, between a rebound and an ultrasonic type hardness tester. The two kinds of testers that we carry at uh, liebhardnesstesters.com on our website is the least expensive hardness testers available in North America. So this is the first kind. Um, it is a rebound type. Rebound meaning that when the slug inside the tester is fired it rebounds off the part and that acceleration is measured by this coil. That rebound works because we fire a little test slug at the material. This is that test slug. There's a very small carbide ball on the end and the way that this is held is when the handle is pushed in little grippers grab, grab the top of the slug and hold it inside the device. Then we can take it to the material being tested after pairing on of course. We choose a material type here, in this case 01. If we look on the back of the tester it'll tell us what the material types are. Uh, here for steel, cast steel, tilled steel, ductile iron and so on. And then we can set here the scale that we want to measure in. So let's measure in HRC which is here, it's showing zero right now as the lead value, this is the number that uh, the device actually measures in, and then it's converted to the HRC, Vickers, Brunel, whatever it might be. So, let's do a quick test. I'll test on the test block, and you can see a value is shown here of 41.6, lead value 652. Now we never do just one test because you'd have inaccuracies. I want to do additional tests and it will then do an average of those tests. So this is showing 41.7, 41.0, and it's showing my average overall is 41.4 for this material, which is pretty accurate because this test block is 41.7. So this is how this tester works. They are great for heavy materials and one of the reasons that the test block is so large is that it needs to be within the conditions that are set for rebound testers. Optimum, 10 pounds or heavier, wall thickness, one inch or greater. And with a reasonable surface finish, it doesn't have to be this fine. You know, something machined like this would be adequate, but those conditions must be met, otherwise you will get inaccurate readings. For example, here, on this part, the wall thickness is maybe oh, 3 eighths of an inch thick, even though the part weighs about 15 pounds. So if I was to test over this area, you will even hear that the part will ring, and it's like a dull clonk. It does not give us an accurate reading. If I go over here, which is now over the area supported by the diameter, it will give us an accurate reading displayed. So thinner parts, no good, unless they are well supported. Here for example, if I was just to test off this part, I would get a reasonable kind of a reading, but it would be really better if this was supported and neatly faced to another part which was heavier, and then to do a test would give a much more accurate reading. A part like this is really getting way too thin, so even it sitting on here, if it was well supported, um, would not give us an accurate reading. Parts as thin as this, forget about it, just not going to happen. This, no good, it's way too thin. This, say we wanted to test the hardness of the face of this, no good, it would never be able to me uh, measure it accurately. So if we do have conditions where we do need to uh, measure other parts, we need to install other test probes. Those other test probe types would be here, this is a C type, as you can see the C is almost identical to the D type. The difference is that the little test slug that is fired at the part is much smaller and is not fired with as much force against the part. It's necked out, so it's exactly the same little carbide ball, but it can measure down to half an inch uncoupled. So this is great for thinner parts, it can even go down to a millimetre or thereabouts, if the part is well coupled, meaning it, it mates very, very well with a heavier part, perhaps coupling grease is used, so what the test thinks is it's one material. So this is the C-Type Pro. It's an option. 
it doesn't fit all the devices, um, but it is available for um, some of our devices that we have on our website. DL type, quite unusual because it is a very thin nose and this is used in areas where it's a gear or perhaps the root of a, a, um, a groove where the face on the regular D type probe, the standard or universal it's called, cannot fit because this has to be sitting neat against the face and it must be perpendicular to the part. So in a case like this where I'm wanting to measure inside this area here, it can get down inside this and by sliding this little guy over the top it allows us to have it positioned quite accurately, load it, fire and we can measure. So what this looks like is a very very thin probe, same gripper mechanism here, carbide ball and high precision machined uh, probe. Next one along is this little guy, it's a DC and what it is is for getting inside areas, say inside of a bore <clears throat> where the other probe is just too long, it can't fit, but this does not have the slider mechanism to grab the part. What we do is we use a little pusher, that locks it and now it can fire. Next one is a G-type, obviously much larger than a D and it has a much larger firing force against the material. Also, it's more ruggedized because it tends to be used in harsher sorts of environments. And it has a huge test probe with a much bigger carbide ball as well. This one is designed for use uh, where it's very large, heavy parts. Perhaps don't have the same machine to finish or don't need to have the same machine to finish as the other types do. Um, so for castings, very porous materials. But it doesn't measure in Rockwell C and all the scales typically only used in Brunel. So this one fits to the other units just by plugging in the cable. Okay, so this sort of a part also is not much good for the rebound type, it's just too small. We could couple it, we might be able to get some degree of reasonable uh, accuracy, but we're really pushing the envelope for rebound type testers. They do tend to be used for larger parts, well supported, and they are very, very accurate for those, they're great. So moving along from that, if we have the need for these thinner parts and less sort of effort required, we have a device that has typically been very, very expensive. Uh, it's a newer sort of technology. Uh, this is an ultrasonic tester. You can see the test probe itself looks somewhat similar. It's a cable attached to it. It has a foot here. This can be screwed off, which is great because it's multi-purpose. Now this can fit inside here and do tests against that part or just handheld. But these do require more work to make them be uh, accurate. And that this work means when they're on the part and you're doing a test, you can fit the foot on, just push down, this unit beeps and it will give you a reading. So here is the reading on this guy. And uh, we can also screw this part of the foot off, turn it over, screw it on, and now we can measure very, very accurately because we can hold it perpendicular, which is critical with these devices, so that when the test is done, it's perpendicular against the part. This shoe slides, so it moves up and down, so it does show the test face. I'm just going to screw this off for now. The difference, one of the big differences between this type, ultrasonic, and the rebound is that we don't use a carbide ball. This is a Vickers diamond. And what we do have inside here is a rod that this is uh, attached to the diamond and it resonates at a very, very high frequency. And so when it's applied to the part, we're measuring the resistance to the frequency through and giving us a very accurate reading. So about plus or minus two or less for Rockwell. Um, very, very good unit. One of its beauties is that, just power it on here again, it has a timeout automatically. Um, it has a great range of testing. A limit that it does have is that they're already not much good for non-ferrous materials like aluminums, brass, copper. 
that a rebound tester might be good for. So here, I'm just going to test right on the part. And there is the hardness. I can test this guy. There is its hardness, and you can see almost imperceptible is the little depression that's left, so we can really truly call this non-destructive testing. I can even test the face of the vice. I can test this part, no problem at all. And I can even test this little thin guy. Now I can't just do it straight on the wood, but if I was to put it over a material that was harder and could support it well, because this is a machined surface and it's sitting very neatly on this one, I can do hardness testings against it. Even on this part here, I don't need to support it. I can measure out. I can measure here. And you can see it is a very, very accurate kind of a device. More expensive, but it has a fairly good range of capabilities. If you were to be measuring larger, heavier parts or ferrous, non-ferrous materials, and for price point, the rebound tester is great. For smaller parts, even down to parts like this that are very small that could never be done with a tester that's a rebound type, it's just too small and the vibration would be absorbed by the impact. Um, this is great. This is uh, around $1,700, which is a third the cost of its next closest competitor. And a great feature of this one is if you do want to go for rebound, the same device can plug in a rebound tester and it's the only one on the market anywhere in the world that can that can take a rebound type tester and this ultrasonic so you really have the best of both worlds. So we over here we have various different test blocks and it's highly recommended that you get these. Um, this big heavy test block is one specially for rebound testers as is the one over here. And the reason they are so big is to meet those conditions of size or mass and thickness. These other ones are ideal for use for setting up this sort of a tester. The tester does come pre-configured with Vickers, Rockwell and Brunel, um, but it is just for um, mild steels if you like. So if you wanted to do it for your own particular steel type, you could have that, a piece of material calibrated, know what its hardness was and very quickly calibrate the tester to that material. For example, if you knew that you were wanting to be te doing testing uh, against a high carbon steel, in around the 40 HRC, you could go and buy a around 40 HRC test block and then just set up the tester to do that. So I'll just power on to show you how that works. We don't sell test blocks typically except for the rebound type because they are harder to find. There are many companies that make test blocks that are NIST traceable. And our whole philosophy is to supply products at the least or the lowest cost. Uh, if we have to then inventory blocks that could be bought from other manufacturers in the US, um, then uh, the cost would go up. It's really best that you just buy from those directly. So I can go here into menu and I can go down to calibration. I can calibrate with one point or two points. And if I do one point, I just say hit select. And then I want to calibrate to this test block, remembering that it is only calibrated right now to um, to um, a mild steel. I test. It tells me it's 41.6 HRC. I might do a couple of other tests because I only just did one there to see what my average might be. But to do a correct, I just type in and then I just change my test to the 45.3 hitting the up button Point 3 and save and now that has been calibrated for that material and for that hardness range I can also set it within two ranges as you can see, I can do a calibration with two points. That way you can do a plus minus range uh, on a material. Say you want to go from oh, 95.1 to 60.2 HR, this is HRB, 45.3 HRC to 62.1 HRC. You can do those two test blocks and actually measure within a range. And you can set that up as your own 
user calibration also. So if I hit the hardness button, there is, these are the preset ones. This is strength, and now I can set up my own user value for HRC, Brunel, and Vickers. Hope that's been of interest to you. And uh, if you have any questions, you can call us at uh, 206-340-5995. Thank you.